Try the uh, Iname Suave here. I haven't had it in a little bit. Um, I'll have to check exactly what the vintage is. Uh, I think it was 2015. But um, really, really deep golden color. I don't know how well you can see it, but really, really rich. Probably spent a lot of time uh, macerating on the skins or um, was a later harvest. It's really interesting. On the nose, I'm getting a lot of like apple and pear um, and a hint of like toast. So we're going to give it a whirl. Really rich, very full-bodied. Um, it definitely gets more of that apple and pear uh, on the palate, but it's also very buttery. Probably went through some malolactic uh, fermentation, uh, maybe some leaves stirring, but it's definitely like very rich, very full-bodied wine. Um, they're pretty nice, very low acidity. You get a little bit of that toasty, vanilla kind of component that makes me kind of think French oak, but I'm not sure on that. Um, really nice. Let's go taste some more. Guys, we've got the 2015 Louis Latour Grand Ardèche Chardonnay. It's definitely right off the nose. I'm getting a lot of that French oak, that toasty vanilla kind of thing going on. Let's give it a whirl. Maybe a hint of pear, but not much. Mostly oak. Yeah, there's a hint of some apple. There's actually kind of a peach um, and definitely some pear, but that, that vanilla on the, the palate is really, really extreme. It's kind of buttery too. Um, you're not going to mistake it for a California Chardonnay, but it's almost like a French Chardonnay, kind of in the style of a California. It's really interesting. All right, let's go taste some other stuff. All right, guys, we've got the 2017 Gerard Bertrand Cote de Roses. Uh, it's from the Long Dock. It's a blend of Grenache, Syrah, and Cinso. Fragrant, very, very floral. Um, it has some really nice kind of red fruits, some like strawberry, um, a little bit of apple. There's like a hint of peach. It's very tropical. It's really, really nice though. Maybe a hint of raspberry too. Very, very fragrant on the nose. Yeah, a lot of the same continued on the palate. It's kind of creamy though. Um, there's not much acidity to it. There is like a lingering strawberry finish to it, which is nice. Um, but I would probably hope for a little more acidity um, to kind of stand up to like the, um, the fruitiness. And there's a hint of sweetness um, that is not really thrilling me at the moment. Um, but it's not bad. It, it depends on what you're after, I guess. Um, it's okay. Let's go taste some better ones. This is a 2015 uh, Bosa Morlino de Scanzano. It's got some like um, black pepper on the nose, little hints of some um, currant actually, a little bell pepper. It's really interesting. I, I would almost mistake this for a cab if I didn't know better. It's a little lighter bodied, you can tell um, just from the color, but it's really interesting. Let's give it a whirl. I would really mistake this for a cab if I wasn't careful. Um, it definitely has some of that black currant, a little bell pepper, a little cassis. There's a little blackberry in there too, um, but it is a medium to lighter body wine. It's not bad. I'm not sure what the price point is on it, and that kind of depends on whether I would recommend it or not. Um, but it's not overly earthy. It doesn't have a real um, rich kind of soil um, component, uh, it doesn't really have a great sense of terroir, so I'm not sure that I would recommend it uh, even without knowing the price point. But interesting to try nonetheless. Let's go see what else we can find. Alright guys, so this is the 2016 Row 11 Pinot Noir. So it's definitely smoky, it's got some cherry on the nose. It also kind of has like a, a warm rubber kind of component going on. It's really interesting.
Yeah, it definitely smells warm, almost burnt rubber. It's not really what you want from a Pinot Noir, necessarily. Let's give it a whirl. It's got some good cherry. There's a hint of some toast. Um, it's a little unbalanced. It kind of redeems itself on the palate. It's got some really good um, flavor. It's got a really good kind of a baking spice component. A little hint of cinnamon. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's actually not bad. Um, we'll have to see what the price point is on it, but it's pretty good. Let's give some others a try. All right, guys, this is a 2016 Belly of the Beast Pinot Noir. This is interesting. It's, um, it's a very light nose. It's kind of perfumed. I don't feel like I'm getting the most out of it in this glass or, um, or in this environment, unfortunately. How about a drinking song? It's got a little cherry. A tiny hint of like a uh, dried raspberry. And I know all of theirs, but you can know. It's got some decent tannins on it, actually. Very, very light, very fine grain. Uh, but there's a really good dryness to it. It kind of balances it out. And there's kind of a hint of toastiness to it. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy at this, depending on what the price point is. If it's like 20 some dollars, not so much. But under that, it'll probably be a pretty decent value. Let's see what other wines we can find. All right, guys, so this is the 2014 El Coto Rioja Crianza. It kind of has a funky nose, um, some like dried raspberry, dried strawberry, maybe a hint of cranberry. It's got um, a hint of earthiness and a little kind of uh, funky countryside kind of smell to it. It's got a nice nose and hopefully has a good sense of place. It's kind of got a, like a real raisiny bit to it as well. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Um, it's fairly smooth. It's got a little bit of oakiness, a little bit of dryness to the finish. Um, I would have liked a little more structure from this wine, but overall, it's not bad. So, yeah, let's go taste some cab. All right, guys, this is the 2016 Sassy Bitch Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. It's around $10. Uh, like I said, that's kind of the magic price point to find some really good values in uh, Chile, so we'll see how this one turns out. Not a great start. The nose is kind of um, a hint rubbery. It has some good black pepper and a tiny hint of currant. It's not a very fruit-driven nose. All right, let's give it a whirl. I'm not impressed with this one. Um, it kind of falls apart in the palate. It's got a little bit of, uh, I guess it's got a hint of black currant if I had to put a fruit to it. But it's kind of got a rubbery component, a little black pepper, and that's about it. Um, this wine is probably the most disappointing one I've had since I've been here. Sorry to say. Um, I really wanted to like it actually because most Chilean Cabernets are incredible values, but this isn't there. So let's see what else we can find. This is the 2012 Hailstone Vineyards Impact Cabernet. It's actually sold out on their website, but I'm really interested to give it a shot and see how it is. Actually, right off the nose, it's pretty good because you're getting a little bit of that black currant, but a lot of it's driven by that earthiness, a little bell pepper, a little black pepper. Hint of cassis. A little blackberry too. There's almost a hint of tobacco leaf on this too. Just a tiny, tiny bit on the finish of the nose. Let's give it a whirl. It's actually really nice. 
It's got a good gaminess, which I didn't really expect. It's definitely got some black pepper, um, green bell pepper. It's got some black currant. A lot of it is that meaty, earthy gaminess. Um, and then a little bit of hint uh, of some toast and some really good um, fine grain tannins on the finish. Structurally, this wine isn't hugely dry, um, but it's very well balanced and all the components come together really nicely, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, this is a pretty good wine. Um, probably one of the better ones we've had at the event so far. I'm pretty happy with it.